lists. Let's, let's do a list for this video, shall we? People like lists. It's one of those few kind of clickbait titles that actually delivers on what it's promising. Sometimes. <laughs> so for this one, let's call the video, let's call it Eight Ways You Are Like Barabbas. Let's get into it. There's another character that goes, you know, that goes into this text, Matthew chapter 26 and 27, who doesn't actually get any lines. He doesn't say anything, and the things that are said about him are very sparse. Even between the different gospel accounts, there's very little said about this character. He's not mentioned before, and he's not mentioned since, uh, you know, after, the, after this event. He's just kind of mentioned almost in passing. But I would argue that this character better represents you than any of the other characters in this narrative. Now, if you read the title of the video, you already know that I'm talking about Barabbas. And Barabbas, you know, if you think off the top of your head, well, Barabbas, you know, what is there to know about this guy? He was a bad guy, right? Yeah, he was a bad guy. There's, you know, that's kind of part of the story. But we'll get into it. In fact, I have a little sticky note here. I have a little sticky note that's going to remind me that there are eight ways, eight ways that you relate to Barabbas, or eight things that you have in common with the story of Barabbas, rather. So let me read for you the portion in Matthew's gospel account that regards Barabbas. So this is Matthew chapter 27, uh, verses 15 through 23. That's right. Now at the feast of the governor, now at the feast the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. Actually, I'll keep reading. Uh, verse 24. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged, Jesus delivered him to be crucified. So there you go. There's the account of Barabbas. A couple of, a couple of mentions, a couple of verses... That's all you get. And if you go to the other gospel readings, you don't really get a whole lot more. You get some details that say, you know, Barabbas is a murderer, Barabbas led an insurrection, uh, that sort of thing. He was a known criminal, and he was a very bad criminal. He was a very bad guy. He deserved to be there. And in fact, uh, I believe he was going to be, be put to death. These are all the details that we have about it. The details regarding Barabbas, and the details regarding Jesus and his interaction, I would say, with Barabbas. You don't really have Jesus speaking directly to Barabbas or, you know, any conversation going on. But there is, there is an interplay here. So there are a few facts, a few facts to consider. And this is, this is where the, the list of eight comes in. The first fact is that Barabbas is a criminal. Barabbas is a sinner. Um, his sin is not private. People know that he was a bad dude. He was notorious. That's what that means. He was known for being a bad guy. He was known for being the criminal. His sin was known. It was not in question. It was not, you know, maybe he's a bad guy. Maybe. No, he was a known sinner. He was a known criminal. So fact number one, Barabbas was a sinner. Fact number two, Barabbas's sins were known. They weren't something that, you know, had to be discovered. They were known. They were absolutely known. Now, What's interesting is what happens when you have Barabbas and Jesus in front of Pilate and what they say, or rather what they don't say. You'll notice that Barabbas never speaks up here to defend himself. And there's a reason for that. He's guilty. 
<laughs> he's absolutely guilty. He's, you know, he, he, there's nothing he can say to defend himself. Justice has already condemned him. He was silenced by justice. He says nothing. He makes no defense because he has no defense to make. You'll also notice, so that's fact number three. Fact number four, you'll notice that Jesus himself doesn't make a defense. Now, Jesus is innocent. Jesus hasn't done anything to warrant the death penalty. Jesus has not sinned. Yet Jesus remains silent. He chooses to remain silent, knowing that by remaining silent and by abstaining from giving a defense, he is condemned to death. He knows this and he remains silent. So, fact so far. Fact one, Brabus is a sinner. Fact two, Brabus' sin is known. Fact three, Brabus has no defense to make. Fact four, Jesus makes no defense. Fact number five, Barabbas was released, but he wasn't released because some new evidence came to bear. He wasn't released because there was a re-adjudication of the case. He was released because of mercy. This was a, like a festival thing, I guess. Pilate would release a criminal, and Barabbas did absolutely nothing. Remember, he made no defense. He did absolutely nothing to earn his own release. He did nothing to earn his own salvation, his own life that was given to him. He was released. He was no longer bound by his crimes and the, and the consequences of his crimes. And this was all due to mercy. So fact number five is Barabbas was released because of mercy, not because of anything earned. Fact number six, Barabbas was going to die. This whole show trial, this fake thing that, you know, it wasn't really an authentic trial. I mean, all the stuff that led up to this, it was not the way that trials were supposed to go. Having a trial in the dead of night, this was because they were not doing it right. They weren't doing it right on purpose. They wanted to convict Jesus. They didn't want justice. Um, so this was kind of a rushed thing where they rushed this, this case forward. And then suddenly Jesus is standing before Pilate uh, and, and, and he, he had no kind of prior convictions, I guess. There was no expectation that Pilate had that morning, I suppose, that this character Jesus was going to be brought to him and then be put to death later that day uh, or be put to death um, uh, after, after, this, after this event. So instead, you think that, okay, Barabbas is going to be put to death on this day, but Barabbas is released. Jesus wasn't going to be put to death on this day, but Jesus is put to death. So in a very real sense, you might actually be able to make the case that the very cross that was intended for Barabbas is used to crucify Jesus. In this case, fact number six would be that Jesus dies in the place of Barabbas. Now, facts number seven and eight. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. I'm going to pull out my handy-dandy Greek. Um, because... There's a variant in, it looks like there's a variant in these manuscripts. And this is not, I usually have uh, Nestle Allen. This is a different one. But in Matthew chapter 27, verse 16, it talks about this character Barabbas. And what's interesting is that in the Greek, it'll have it here in brackets. Um, and that usually indicates that there's something written in some manuscripts, but not other manuscripts. For whatever reason, the people who translated the English Bible, there's actually a word, or in, in, you know, in verse 17, there's two words that don't make it into the manuscript, that don't make it into the English manuscript. And the reason may be because it would lead to confusion, specifically these words being in there. Uh, but maybe that's the point. Maybe the point is to be a little bit confusing on this on this aspect. And the word, I know you're, you're on the edge of your seat, you're wondering what word was left out of the English translation of the Bible. It wasn't like an article. It wasn't like the or a. The word is Jesus. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 16, and then in verse 17, I wonder if we get it later. Verse 16 and 17 in particular, the word Jesus is left out. That's the word. Now, it's not Jesus talking about Jesus of Nazareth. It's not Jesus talking about Jesus the Christ. But in Matthew 16, I'll read it to you in English again. In Matthew 16, it says, And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So where does the word Jesus fit in? Right before Barabbas. And Origen will make, Origen made, I guess, a big deal about this. Um, that there is some there is some evidence that Barabbas's first name is Jesus. 
Jesus Barabbas. So Jesus the Christ, Jesus of Nazareth, stood next to Jesus Barabbas here. Now, that, that on its own, I mean, you may be thinking, wow, you know, this Barabbas character was named Jesus. Well, yeah, but Jesus is a pretty common name back then. You know, you'd think uh, the Hebrew version of Jesus would be Joshua. The Greek version of Jesus, Jesus, is, you know, that's why we translate it to Jesus. So, you know, it's a pretty common word, right? Joshua, Jesus. Surely, it's, it's a coincidence that there are two people standing up there named Jesus, right? Usually, if you've got something like that, uh, some sort of confusion, you distinguish between the two people by their last names. Now, last names worked a little bit different back then. Not terribly different, but somewhat different. A lot of times, your last name, um, you'll, you'll know later on, last names are often people's professions. Somebody's last name is, a, is Smith or Fletcher or, or Plummer or something like that. But there are also some last names, and we do this today sometimes, where a last name refers to the person's father. Johnson, son of John. Stevenson. Peterson, things like that. So in this case, um, Jesus would have likely been called by some Jesus bar Joseph. Jesus' father was Joseph. Bar is the Aramaic word for, you know, son of. So it would be Jesus, son of Joseph. Jesus, Josephson. Jesus bar Joseph. So Jesus bar Joseph and Jesus Barabbas standing next to each other. Again, you know, that's pretty different between Barabbas and uh, bar Joseph until you remember that Jesus' adoptive father is Joseph. It's not his actual father. His actual father is God the Father. God the Father in the Old Testament is often just called the Father. So it's actually Jesus, son of the Father, standing next to Jesus, Barabbas. Okay, that's still, you know, you can still distinguish between the two. Until you translate Barabbas' name. Do you want to guess? Do you have any guess what Barabbas in Aramaic may translate to? Bar Abba. Barabbas, Barabba. Abba meaning father. Barabbas meaning son of the father. Jesus, the son of the father, stood next to Jesus, the son of the father. One of them would live and one of them would die. One of them would die in the place of the guilty one. One of them would live even though he was himself guilty. Fact number seven and fact number eight. Fact number seven, Jesus is truly the true son of the father. Fact number eight, Barabbas is called the son of the father. So here are the list of facts. One, Barabbas is a sinner. Two, Barabbas' sin is known. Three, Barabbas has no defense to make. Four, Jesus makes no defense for himself. Five, Barabbas was saved by mercy. Six, Jesus died in Barabbas' place. Seven, Jesus is the son of the Father. Eight, Barabbas is called the son of the Father. That's great. A list of facts about Barabbas, but what do they have to do with you? Well, it has everything to do with you. If you look at this and you put yourself in the story, in the place of Barabbas, this is a description of your life as a Christian, of your life as a sinner who has been forgiven. Let's go through the facts one more time, but let's put you in them. One, you are a sinner. Two, your sin is known. Three, you have no defense. Four, Jesus makes no defense. Five, you were saved by mercy. Six, Jesus died in your place. Seven, Jesus is the son of the Father. And eight, you are called a son of of the Father, a child of God. Jesus puts his name on you. The name of God is placed on you in baptism in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're adopted as one of God's sons or daughters. Not only is your sin wiped clean, not only does Jesus pay for all of your sin on the cross, but you also are covered in Christ's righteousness. You put on Christ. When the Father looks at you. He doesn't see your sin and your accomplishments and your shortcomings. When the Father looks at you, he sees the Son. He sees the Son of God. He sees Jesus, what Jesus has done for you and covered you with. The story of Barabbas is the story of somebody who is a sinner, who does not deserve to be saved, who earned their own death, and who has no defense that they can make. They stand there silent and helpless as they progress towards the cross that they have earned. And Jesus intercedes, dies when he originally, when he has not committed any sin, when he's not done anything to warrant the cross himself, dies in the place of you, the sinner, you, the Barabbas, 
And then you are set free, but not only are you set free, but you are set free with the name of Jesus on you. So you get to bear his righteousness. In this way, you are Barabbas. You are saved. I hope this list of eight ways you are like Barabbas was helpful and helps you to enjoy reading this account of what Jesus did for you in your place. God bless and take care.